bummer. You guys thought you were gonna get a cinematic intro. Psych. Who doesn't like a good 556 five, can? Am I right? Compact, purpose built, efficient. But what about this monstrosity? <laughs> this is the AB Suppressors Raptor, and that's what we're gonna be talking about in today's video. We have a whole bunch of configurations to talk about, so let's get to it. The AB Raptor is a sealed spiral baffle can designed to maximize suppression efficiency. Unlike other designs, the Raptor line is characterized by the number of spirals it includes rather than simply its caliber bore. For this video, we'll be using the 4 spiral 556 version and the 8 spiral 30 cal variant. The Raptor line goes up to 10 spirals at a max rating of 375 and a minimum spiral count of 2. The device offers a large relative volume generated by applying the welded baffle concept, but also has the option of adapting unused headspace between the muzzle and the handguard to increase the blast chamber volume to points otherwise impractical. This is achieved with a variety of reflex adapters that allow the can to be permutated to fit the end host. In addition to reducing the net overall length of the device, this concept distributes the weight closer to the center of gravity, reducing its perceived weight. The Raptor comes with a single tool that interfaces with both the front and rear caps through a series of struts. In addition to the reflex modules, AB offers other configurable attributes like end cap geometry and has designed their cans to accept a 1.375 adapter accuracy time and if you've never seen one of these things before basically what we're doing is shooting it unsuppressed seeing what it prints and then shooting it suppressed and seeing what it prints and we'll compare not only the size of the groups but also where they orient on the paper I might have pulled that last one. Yeah, just as I thought. I sent that one a little bit early, but this is where we're shooting unsuppressed. We're gonna go ahead and throw the can on there and see where we map 
in relation to this group. All right. So I don't know what's wrong with that gun, guys. Uh, it clearly needs tagged out and PM'd. Uh, so we're gonna do that and break it off for today. But before we do, this is the group that was developing in the scope when I was shooting it suppressed. So the group got smaller and it's in relatively the same spot, which is something that we typically see from well-made suppressors. They'll usually shrink a group. I'm gonna call this zero point of impact shift. And for obvious reasons, we're gonna ignore these outliers out here. You know what time it is. It's time to test how gassy this can is. So to do that, we're gonna use the rifle speed gas control, full video out on this device, of course. But because of the way this is set up, I've taken the 5.56 version and I obviously cannot reflux it because there's just not enough space. So I've got the direct thread mount, we're gonna be using it. So first up, unsuppressed, and we're going to basically get a good ejection pattern. All right, I got 3.30, 4 o'clock, we're on setting six, which is nominal setting. It can get a little bit higher in the winter time. So the internet freaks out about this, so. Okay, so we have a 2.30 ejection, so we need to go down a little bit. And we're back. We're back to a, it's a little bit more vigorous, but we're back to a 330-ish ejection. So very slight reduction is required. So, and I don't want to get into the weeds on this. Suppressors do not actually increase the back pressure of your firearm. They increase the dwell time. Think of it, how much, how long. A suppressor artificially increases your barrel length a percentage of barrel length. It's not, this length of suppressor is not worth that length of barrel. It's worth some percentage of the barrel. So you get more gas impulse because it's got a longer time under pressure before that seal is completely broken as the projectile exits the, the can. So anyway, it's looking pretty good. Even without the reflux, I could imagine that if we basically doubled this volume, that we would get probably very similar performance to unsuppressed. But I can't test it, because I don't build my guns that way. What's up everybody, we're getting ready to start the nighttime component of the testing, and this one's gonna be a little bit different because we have a whole bunch of different configurations to look at. So what I plan to do is as follows. First of all, we're gonna be working exclusively in 300 blackout because I only have one rifle that can accept the full reflux, and that's in 300 blackout. So <laughs> that's what we're gonna be doing. The other thing that I plan to do is eliminate the unsuppressed shot. The reason why is because, well, it looks like somebody just took a blank sheet of paper and put it up to the camera. I don't think that's really value added. Any suppressor is gonna be better than no suppressor. So the testing is gonna be as follows. The can by itself, direct thread, no reflux. Then reflux. And then I'm confident there'll still be something that comes out of the end of the, the muzzle, the flash suppressor end cap. So that's what I plan to do, both shots at the uh, muzzle end and at the ejection port to see how things act in. So we should be ready to go here in just a few minutes. It's almost dark enough to begin. To film that, I will be using my Generation 3 PBS-14 mounted on my hard-headed veteran's ATE ballistic helmet. I recently did a video on the lattice system that they've got going on. Pretty cool stuff. They also offer VSO subscribers a discount. Information over at the affiliates page. And we have an absolutely beautiful night tonight with heavy cloud cover, so hopefully light pollution should be at a minimum. No reflux at the muzzle. At the ejection port. Oh, 
with the reflux at the muzzle. At the ejection port. Guys and gals, I almost made a horrific error. <laughs> uh, that would have been really bad. So, unfortunately, that means that I had to go back and get a 5.56 gun. That could have been really terrible. I'm glad I checked on that one. So, now I got a 5.56 gun. 5.56, no reflux, standard cap. At the ejection port. It's dark enough, I can't even see the ejection port. I don't know what it'll look like in post, but I can't see it. With the flash suppressing end cap. Guys and gals, you know what they say about making plans, right? <laughs> At this point, I'm gonna overstate the obvious and say that the reflux is king. That combination with that many spirals and that reflex adapter, mwah, fantastic. I've seen very few devices capable of producing that kind of performance at night. Now, as far as the flash suppressing end cap is concerned, I would say that uh, with that number of spirals, the four count spiral, that we uh, see diminishing returns. Now, I will say that when I was analyzing the video after the fact in post-production, I saw very little difference between the two pieces of video, but in person, what I was detecting through the PVS-14 was a detectable level of flash reduction. It just wasn't like night and day, so to speak. Now let's shift gears and talk about the ejection port signature. Uh, it was a really dark night last night, which means that we should have if there was anything there, be able to detect. That would have been the ideal situation to detect some kind of ejection port signature. And we got none. So that whole overcast thing, no moon, uh, really lends itself to that and uh, didn't see anything. Which also correlates to what we saw when we did the uh, measurement of how it influences the gas settings on, on the rifle. Uh, very little needed on the adjustment to get the thing to run optimally. And I think that has a lot to do with that extra volume sucking up that extra gas expansion. Now, if I was to categorize my time with the Raptor in terms of crimes that I have perpetrated against it. Uh, one, <laughs> I've just thrashed it up. The Cerakote's completely ruined on this device. The biggest crime that I have committed against it is that I have an incapability to provide you guys with the full audio experience just because I'm communicating with you over a video medium like this. There's just limits to the audio signatures. When shooting this device, on a subsonic 300 blackout fully refluxed. You hear a hiss as the projectile leaves the muzzle. You hear a ding as the bolt closes, and then you hear the paper tear. There are very few devices that I have tested that can replicate that kind of performance, and none of them are rifle cans. On to critiques. And I'm just gonna say it. This thing looks goofy as hell, man. If I was using a standard, a uh, Y diameter rail, then it would probably delete a lot of this extra bulk here. But I recognize that that's 100% aesthetics and that's a personal choice. It's the user serviceability side of things. I would like to see the capacity to be able to use other tools than the included ones. Some kind of flat on here to be able to put a wrench on it would be nice. I don't think that that would be hard. You don't have to delete this either because I really like the way this looks. I think this is very attractive here at the end. I think one of the areas that might be a problem is there's no flat here. And because of that, I could see there being an issue, but I suppose at the same time, if you can get this section off, then you'll have access to that, that first flange 
and you would be able to put something on that. So it's not a huge deal, but it would be nice to have all the utility to not have to find a single tool, particularly a tool that is black when you're trying to change end caps in the middle of the night when it's also black. But really, to be completely honest, I'm just kind of grasping for straws to balance this review because I'm pretty happy with the performance of this device. It's not overly heavy. It's pretty accurate. It doesn't spray a whole bunch of gas back in your face and it can be made to be fairly non-flashy. Oh yeah, and it's ridiculously quiet. So on that note, I would be very interested because this is the eight spiral variant. I would be very interested to see what happens when we go 10. And that thing's rated up to some big bore stuff, up to 338 Lapua and things like that. So I would be interested in a follow-up to see what max suppression really looks like. But that said, that's our look at the AB Suppressors Raptor. Special thanks to AB for sending these products in for evaluation. Thank you for tuning in this long. And special thanks to our Patreon and Subscribestar members that help generally keep the channel afloat. And you should see some of their names on screen right now.